Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Amy's Bookshelf. So I asked this week on Instagram, uh, I gave a poll to my followers to ask which video they'd like me to film and the one that won was a rundown of my favourite slash auto buy authors. So that's what you'll get in this video. Uh, so it's kind of quite hard to choose um, because to be honest, the list could be quite long of like auto buy authors. Like authors I know that if I see a book of theirs in a bookshop, I probably will pick up, even if I didn't love every book I've ever read by them. So I've narrowed it down and I've chosen 10 and I've split them into three groups. First group is always love. So everything I've read by this author, I've always loved either a five star or four star read um, and I've read more than two of their books. The second one is authors I normally love but not always, there are some exceptions to the rule. And then the third one is not read much by them but I've loved it so far and that's authors where I've only read two or fewer books. I loved what I read but I feel like you need to read at least three to know for sure that they're like a consistent favourite auto by author for you or that's like the rule I've made for myself anyway. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. The first category is always love. Um, I've chosen four authors here um, whose books I always love. All of them, like I said, either five or four star reads. Um, yeah, and I just love everything they write. So number one is Lisa Genova. Um, I'm sure you've heard me talking about her before because um, I just adore her books. I have ever since I read Still Alice, which is the first book of hers I read. Uh, Lisa Genova used to be a neuroscientist and she is now an author. So her books always surround some kind of neurological disease or condition um, and they are just fascinating. But what I love even more about them is how they are such an exploration of the human condition, of our relationships with each other, of how these diseases can impact real life families. Um, as well as how interesting it is to learn about the disease as well. So I have read all of her books. <laughs> so if I can remember, that is Still Alice, Left Neglected, Inside the O'Briens, Every Note Played, Love Anthony and Remember, which is a non-fiction. Um, and I think she is currently writing another one. So obviously I'll be buying it immediately. Um, the only exception to the list is I didn't love Love Anthony. I, I did enjoy it. So Love Anthony focuses on autism and is mainly about the relationship of a mother and her son. Um, and I did really enjoy it, but it wasn't a five star read, whereas every other one of her books have been five star reads. But I still consider that definitely enough books to be like, yeah, she's an author I love and an auto buy author as well. Because um, that's a lot of books to have read and to have loved all of them. So that's why she is in this list. But yeah, I'd really recommend reading her books. Like I said, they're really fascinating, but they're also really compelling, a little bit emotional, but I promise you'll feel really connected to them and you'll really love the characters and the stories. Basically, I'd really recommend her. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then second in this list is Sarah Winman. So I've not read all of her books, although I own most of them, I think. I have read Tin Man, I've read When God Was a Rabbit, and I've read Still Life. All of them were five star reads. Again, similarly to Lisa Genova, the reason I love Sarah Winman is because she writes really compelling reads just about people, and I, I really love that in books. You'll probably see that that's a bit of a running theme. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, it's one that will always kind of capture your heart, you'll pull on your heartstrings, you'll maybe get a bit emotional. Um, and they're kind of slow burns, which I really love. They're not necessarily like plot driven, very much char character driven. Um, and ones that when you first start reading, you're not really sure of, but by the end you've fallen in love with. So she's definitely an auto buy author for me. And like I said, I own some of the others of hers, so I will definitely be trying to read them. Next is Frederick Backman. Now, this one is a bit of a cheat, but Again, I will explain, it's similar to Lisa Genova. So I have read of Frederick Backman's A Man Called Ove, all of the Beartown trilogy, so Beartown, Us Against You and The Winners. I've read Anxious People. I have read The Deal of a Lifetime. I've read Brit Marie Was Here. And is that all of them? I'm just looking at Goodreads. I think that's all of them. So the only ones I haven't read are My Grandmother Asked Me To Tell You She's Sorry and Every Morning The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer. Uh, I think they're all the ones I haven't read. So yeah, I've read most of them. All of them are five star reads, except for Brit Marie Was Here, which why Frederick Backman is a little bit of a cheat is because that was actually a three star read for me. Um, 
I didn't love it. But the thing is, I really wanted to love it because it felt so Bachman. The writing was great. It had a lot of incredible moments that had like depth and layers and it was really great, but I just couldn't connect with it. And probably that was because the main topic and subject of the book was football and I really don't like football. Um, so I think that probably had something to do with it. But the reason he's in this list is because every other book I've read by him, I have adored. And two of his books, A Man Called Ove and The Winners, are in like my top 10 favourite books of all time. So there's no way he can't be in this list. That would just be cruel. Um, so yeah, I want to read the other two books that I haven't read yet and they probably will be five star reads for me. So yeah, very much looking forward to them, but I know that he is a very popular author. His books are translated from Swedish. And honestly, if you haven't read anything by him yet, I urge you to go get a copy of any one of his books, to be honest, because they're all pretty good. And the final one on this list is Nicola Yoon. Uh, I have read from her Everything Everything, Instructions for Dancing, and The Sun is Also a Star. Loved all of them. Everything Everything was a four star read. The other two were five star reads. And again, the same as the rest of the authors. I love her books because they're very much just about people and their connections to each other, their relationships with each other, what it means to be human, how we are as people, how we're all a bit broken and imperfect, but how that's kind of beautiful. And yeah, I adore her books and her writing is just amazing. There's so many real quotable sentences in her books and that's really important for me. I really appreciate a writer whose books I can kind of take sound bites from um, and look back at later or quote. So I really appreciate her for that. So yeah, she's definitely on that part of the list. Okay, so now two authors who I love, but not always and we'll just ignore Frederick Backman because he definitely belongs in the first list. Uh, so the first one in this list is Akweke Amezi. I have read by them Pet, Bitter, uh, The Death of Vivek OG, Dear Centurion, and You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. I haven't read Freshwater and I haven't read their most recent book, which I can't remember what it's called. Um, so Pet, Bitter and the Death of Vivek OG, incredible. Loved all three of them. Vivek OG in particular, again, is in probably my top 10 books of all time. So I'd really recommend you go read that. Uh, the reason they're in this part of the list and not the first part is because Dear Centurion, which is a kind of memoir, it is a memoir, but it's a very different memoir. Um, and also You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty were both three star reads for me. Um, and I can understand why people like them, but I think a Quake Mezzi, when they write, they often try to subvert traditional genres or traditional storytelling. And sometimes that just doesn't always work for everyone. And it didn't work for me in those two. But like I said, Pet Bitter and Vivek OG, incredible, incredible books. So happily put them in this part of the list, but it's not always a five star read for me. And then also on this list is Beth O'Leary. So by Beth O'Leary, I have read The Flat Share, The Road Trip, The Switch and The No Show. Flat Share, The Road Trip were both five star reads. The Switch was a four star read, but The No Show was a three star read. And that was really disappointing because I really wanted to love it. Um, I think I did review it. So I'll leave my review in the description if you want to find out a little bit more about why I didn't love it. Um, but essentially there were parts of the plot that I just think didn't work. Um, they weren't like plot holes necessarily, but I just think the way that she set up the like narrative arc really should have gone in a different direction. And when it ended up where it did, I was just confused. So overall, it was a bit underwhelming for me and I didn't love it. But The Flat Share and The Road Trip in particular, I think are incredible romance books. She writes romance really well. So I would really recommend them. And other people have really liked the no-show. So it's probably a me problem and not a her problem. But yeah, that is why she's in this part of the list and not in the first part. Okay, and the third list is I've not read much from, but I have loved what I've read so far. So these authors where I've only read two books. So in my opinion, not enough of their books to really put them in like my favorite of all time because I might not like anything else they've written. Um, so first up is Ruth Ware. I have read The Turn of the Key and One by One. The Turn of the Key was a five star read. One by One was a four star read. 
honestly incredible thrillers really really gripping so hard to put down um and very much the edge of like scary for me i'm not good at scary i'm not good at like real tension and suspense it freaks me out so uh this is the real edge of what i can cope with um the turn of the key kind of gets a bit supernatural but one by one is very much um in the mind of like a killer and it's quite it's a little bit kind of disturbing but fascinating um, and I would really recommend both of them especially The Turn of the Key. I have another one of hers and I know that she has written loads and I will definitely be reading them but I have to bide my time because generally they're books I read on holiday when it's blazing sunshine and I'm by a pool and I can't get too scared. They're not books I can read at night before I go to bed because I'm, I'm not strong enough for that. <laughs> so yeah, I will endeavour to read more and hopefully when I read a third one, if I do also love it, she can then bring herself up into the first part of my list. Next on this list is TJ Klune. I have read uh, The House on the Cerulean Sea and Under the Whispering Door. The Cerulean Sea was easily a five star read and Under the Whispering Door, I really wanted to give five stars, but it just didn't quite hit in the same way as The Cerulean Sea. So it was probably a four or a 4.5. Still really, really good. Um, these books are amazing because I love the way that they focus on relationships. They have like romance in them, but it's kind of a subplot to the rest of the book, which is also really beautiful and powerful because the books try and do so much else on their own. Um, and having read Under the Whispering Door quite recently, you can check out my February wrap up to hear my thoughts there. Um, but yeah, I just love the way it talked about grief um, and the exploration of it as well. And just the depiction of the afterlife and how TJ Klune had imagined that is really wonderful. So yeah, I'd really recommend his books, but I've only read two. And again, hopefully he'll be in the top part of the list. Next is Stuart Turton. I think he's only actually written and published two books. So they're the only two I've been able to read. And they are The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and also The Devil and the Dark Water, both five star reads, both really, really great. Um, they're both thrillers, very different genres of thrillers, I would say. Uh, the Seven Deaths of Ed Evelyn Hardcastle is kind of, well, it's like a Groundhog Day style plot, but it's body switching so there's kind of a bit of I suppose sci-fi involved but it feels very grounded in the real world um, and then it kind of has like a Black Mirror element to it so I would really recommend it if you like the TV show Black Mirror but all in all it was just a really gripping thriller and it's quite long I think it's like five six hundred pages so to keep me gripped for that long I think it's quite impressive so yeah really love that and then The Devil in the Dark Water is a murder mystery a whodunit but it's set on a ship in the 1500s again which is really interesting as a setting but it really really gripped me and again for a five six hundred page book you've got to be impressed that I couldn't stop like I couldn't put it down so yeah love him again will happily move him to the top part of the list but I need to read more just to be sure that I do love everything he writes okay and the final person on this list is Nina Lacour I have read by her everything leads to you and we are okay they were both for me five star reads in particular we are okay was easily one of my best reads of 2022 is such a beautiful book so like quietly impactful um and I just adored reading it I really love her writing she really focuses on just like beautiful sentence structure and these real introspective moments of again like human connections the human condition our relationships with each other I just adored it but again I've only read two of her books she definitely has more although I know a few of hers are like co-written with other people. I own one that she co-wrote with David Leatherton and I think she's had another one with somebody else as well. So I'm not sure how many other standalone books she has. So again, it might be a case of just waiting for her to publish more and then I will read them and hopefully she can move up to the top of the list. Okay, so that is all of them. And yeah, that is a rundown of my favourite authors, why I like them, where they kind of sit for me in that um, structure. And yeah, uh, they are all pretty solid. Um, and I really enjoy reading all of their books. So yeah, if you uh, have read any of them, let me know your thoughts about any of those authors, if we share any favourite authors. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please stay tuned for some more videos coming soon. Uh, please like this video and please subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all of my content. I'm nearly on a thousand subscribers, so I would really appreciate anybody subscribing to my channel. Uh, yeah, and I will see you next time. Bye!